Back at the end of August, August the 25th, Google posted a blog post on the Android developer's blog that I imagine a lot of you probably expected me to talk about, and I haven't talked about it. We're going to talk about it here in this video. The reason that I've kind of just let this news story sit for a little while is I wanted to let the dust settle a little bit, let some things kind of get figured out before we tried to talk about it and, and just sort of added to the... I don't want to say hysteria because I think that a lot of this is uh, somewhat justified concern. But you know what I mean. I didn't want to kind of add to the noise. I wanted to wait until we could talk more definitively about this. What are we talking about? Here's the post. A new layer of security for certified Android devices. Basically, what Google is doing is they are changing the way that sideloading works. And I think the best way that I can walk you through what all of this is and what it could possibly mean is with this article that I've just posted over on my own website, shanecraig.tech, where I go through all of this in detail. I'm just going to use this as sort of a template to take you through this story and tell you why people are panicking, what it might mean, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, at the heart of this new policy, we have a mandate from Google that requires developers to verify their identity with Google in order for their apps to be really installed in any way on certified Android devices. But I think the most relevant portion of this is for sideloading, because if your app is in the Play Store, you're already verified. So that's redundant. This is really targeting sideloading. If you don't know what sideloading is, this is where you go to a website like apkmirror.com or something like that. Hopefully you're going to more reputable websites like that and not installing APKs that you just found in a post on Twitter or something like that. And you install that. It's like an executable on your Windows computer and you install that on your phone. It didn't come from the Play Store, but you've gone ahead and installed it. That is side loading. It's not like, it's like downloading, but from the side. Now, Google's rationale for making developers register before their apps can be sideloaded is security. They say that their recent analysis found over 50 times more malware from internet sideloaded sources versus apps on the Play Store. So their goal, their stated goal, is to create a chain of accountability that makes this sort of thing more difficult. If you are a developer making malware, hiding malware in an otherwise normal looking calculator app, let's say, and that gets installed, but you have told Google who you are, it's a lot easier for them to then say, hey buddy, you're making malware, you are no longer registered, you are kicked out of this program, and your apps can no longer be installed on any Android device. And that, I think, for a lot of people is going to make some obvious sense. Of course, if you're making apps for people to download, you should have to stand behind those apps. That's going to keep people safer. But it's a lot more complicated than just that. So despite the fact that Google is leaning heavily on explicitly stating that this is about device security, many users are fearful that this is taking steps towards Android being more like iOS, more walled off and more controlled. You have to think about why people would be trying to sideload applications from developers who wouldn't want to have their names registered with Google. What kinds of apps would those be? Well, those are going to be, I would imagine typically, apps that are breaking the terms of service of Google for Android or potentially apps that are going to be illegal in some way. And there's a lot of gray area there, right? What about emulators? Emulators themselves might not be illegal, but they're almost exclusively used to play ROMs that you probably downloaded illegally. So what happens if Nintendo goes to Google and says, hey, we want you to remove these emulators from the Play Store, but we also want you to go a step further and we want you to take those developers who registered with you to make that emulator and we want you to kick them off that program so they can't make any emulators ever again for Android. That is a problem. I know Gcam ports are also very popular still as well. People are taking Google's camera application and they are modifying it to run on other phones. 
Does Google have a problem with this? Is this something where some of these developers, maybe they think, yeah, it'll be fine. They register and they make their application. They host it on websites where you can download it and install it, but they've got their name attached to it. And Google says, actually, we don't like that. And we are going to revoke your registration and you can't make apps anymore. I bet a great many of you are watching this video right now through YouTube Revanced, and by doing that, you are circumventing the ads that are placed on YouTube, which means I don't make a dime off of you watching my content. Just something to think about. But those applications are patched. They are run through this Revanced patcher application. You take the YouTube APK, you run it through this app, it changes a bunch of things about it, you install that APK, and then you have a version of YouTube that doesn't have ads, but it also has a lot of other sort of quality of life features that people might enjoy. Well, that patch your application, it's going to generate an APK, but that APK, by definition, is not going to have attached to it a developer name. So this might render Revanced Patcher app completely, completely useless because that app itself could be registered and could be approved by Google, but the APKs it generates, I don't know how that could possibly be installed. Now, it's important to note that Google has said absolutely nothing about how they're going to sort of go about revoking people's registration. They've really not spoken about that at all, but you can logically infer some reasons. Obviously, malware is a good way to theoretically have your registration revoked and your rights removed. Financial frauds and scams, misrepresentation, things that are just, they're just misrepresenting what their app is. And then, of course, things that break the law or terms of services. Again, Google hasn't stated any of this. They're going to have to make it very clear what can get you deregistered, if anything. I mean, otherwise, we're just kind of making these broad assumptions. When is all of this going to start happening? Well, it's going to be in a phased rollout. The new requirements will begin to roll out in late 2026 in specific regions. They're going to be testing this in Brazil, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand before a planned global expansion in 2027. So it's still a ways out. And this could change. There's been quite a bit of uproar, so we don't know how this is going to actually take shape, right? This could be something much like the Google Play Protect option that's already on your phone that you can circumvent and turn off if you want to. We just don't know. Developers who distribute apps outside the Play Store will need to use a new Android developer console to register their identity. Google has stressed this process is solely for identity verification and that it will not involve a review of the device's content. But again, like we said earlier, there has to be some, uh, some amount of verification, not in necessarily in the process of registration, but if you register, what's the point of registering if you can then just distribute malware and not be deregistered? Like, that does not make any sense. So of course, there's going to be some review of app content. I think it's just not going to be at the point of registration. Of course, there is no Play Store impact. If all you ever do is install apps from the Play Store, which is what I do 99.9% .9 of the time, I very rarely install things anywhere else other than I've been developing my own application over the last like year and a half. And of course, I sideload that. But I would imagine if I'm just sideloading it through like something like wireless debugging or something like that, that probably is going to let you get around that as well for like development purposes. That seems like that would be a logical uh, thing for them to add in. But like I said, for most of us, most of the time, this probably doesn't have much of an impact. And then, of course, there's going to be a way to enforce this. So there's going to be a new application apparently called the Android Developer Verifier app. And that is separate from the Google Play Protect system that's already in place. I'm not sure why they're using something separate, but I guess for whatever reason they are. It seems like it's a bit redundant to have the Play Protect system in place, which basically pops up and says, you're sideloading an application. This might be dangerous. Do you want to do this? And you can say, yeah, go ahead and install it. This seems, like I said, a bit redundant, but apparently that's the way that they're going. Now, we also have to talk about the timing of this because this is happening not that far away from when Google had their antitrust lawsuit with the Department of Justice uh, with Epic Games. Epic was basically saying that Google had an illegal monopoly over the Android market, and because of that, Google has been forced to allow things like more third-party app stores. Of course, this impacts that. So the ruling basically means that Google has to allow third-party app stores to access content on the Google Play Store, basically the Play Store's app catalog. And that's absolutely fine, and that probably won't be impacted. But for any application that that third-party app store wants to host that's not in the Play Store catalog, well, now that has to have a registered, verified developer. So they've basically snatched back 
a little bit of control from that third-party app store. Is this something that could get Google in some sort of trouble? Perhaps. Now, this is one of those situations that I really don't know how I feel about it. I don't really know where I stand on this because part of me does understand where Google is coming from. I understand that, yeah, most people probably don't need to be sideloading applications. They're getting scammed. They're going and they're finding an APK in a Facebook post or something like that, and they're installing it, and bad things are happening to them because of that. And a lot of people can't be trusted with this sort of power, the power of sideloading. And they've already done some things to kind of warn you against it. Maybe that's far enough. Maybe if Google says, this is dangerous, do you really want to do this? And you say yes, maybe that's your fault and you should just be scammed at that point. Going, you know, wholesale blocking and saying, we're not even asking you, we're just saying, no, you can't do this. Maybe that's a step too far. But you also have to think Google's trying to maybe not look like the operating system that is less secure versus iOS. They get criticized for this sort of thing. So like I said, I can kind of see the point here, but I can also see from people that are like, wow, this is potentially like really concerning for people that just want to have that full freedom. But then you also have, you know, like this is something people aren't really talking about as much. Also, there are developers who are making applications that are maybe politically sensitive and maybe they're in countries that are a bit more repressive and maybe those applications are also going to be at risk because that developer doesn't want to say who they are and be at risk of getting in trouble from that somewhat more repressive regime like there's a lot of ramifications to this and I do worry that Google might be preparing to go maybe a step or two too far on this And, and even if their goal genuinely is security of their users this might backfire and end up doing more harm than good. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I think I know what they're going to be based on who I think my audience is. I think you guys are going to be very much against this. I do want you to at least temper this a little bit and understand that even you are probably running 99% apps that came from the Play Store. So at the end of the day, it's not going to make that big of a difference for many people, but still, I do get a lot of you are probably going to be pretty irritated about this news. Hopefully, Google can kind of tweak this and maybe change some things, make this an opt-in thing like the Play Protect app. We're just going to have to wait and see how things go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.